from six. ESPN 1530, my name is Mo Egger. Ken Griffey Sr. about uh, 10 years ago beat prostate cancer. It is in a, it's a cause very, very close to his heart, very, very close to his family, and he's uh, taking that, he's channeling that into uh, some good work. He is going to be a part of an event on Saturday, the uh, Zero Prostate Cancer 10K, 5K Blue Ribbon Run and Walk. It's coming up on uh, Saturday. It's at the Urology Group in Norwood. I've linked to uh, where you can find out more on my blog at ESPN1530.com. Search word Mo. The uh, Reds legend is with us. I do want to talk to you about uh, the Reds and specifically Billy Hamilton, but first... I read a piece about a month or so ago on uh, the undefeated.com about this uh, about prostate cancer, about what it's meant to you, about what it's meant to your family. I would imagine this event on Saturday reflects as much. Well, we've been doing this for a while, but yeah, it is very important to me because of the fact, like I said, my, my, my mother lost four of her brothers with prostate cancer, and my youngest brother was just diagnosed and had surgery for prostate cancer about a month ago, so uh, I'm going to stay on it, and then, uh, you know, the, the campaign we're actually running with Bear is called Men Who Speak Up, and that's the situation where we're trying to get men to talk to their doctors about their symptoms. Because, you know, all everything that goes on around them, you know, if the symptoms are getting, that means the disease may be getting worse. So we're trying to get everybody just to elaborate on what's going on, especially talk to their doctors to get things straightened out. More than 29,000 men will die of prostate cancer each year. It is the second leading, leading cause of cancer deaths among men in the United States. And, and you know, and... and You've been in this environment where, where men don't talk about stuff. Men don't talk about health. Men don't talk about things that bother them. Men are often reluctant to, to, get, to get treated, to go to the doctor. And so I know you can emphasize how important it is to talk about these things. Well, yes, because for, for a fact, you know, if it wasn't for wives or, or the women in their lives, you know, to make sure that they go, you know, I mean, my wife has been very adamant. My mother was very adamant when I was younger about it because she, you know, because of her, her brothers. And my wife stays on me, Val, she stays on me about seeing the doctor and making sure that I talk to the doctor if anything else has changed. So, but the biggest thing to me has been the PSA. You know, the PSA is, is what we found the prostate cancer early. And early detection always gives you a chance of survival. And I think that's the biggest thing. My brother had saved my brother's life because he had, he had a swollen prostate for years, and he was taking medication until his PSA went straight up. And that's when they went and uh, had the biopsies and tested him, and everything went well. Then after that, you know, he's doing fine now, but it was the same with me. My PSA went up. I took the biopsies. And they found I had prostate cancer. I went to two different doctors, two, two different hospitals and everything else to, to get a second opinion sometimes. But uh, like I said, men don't talk about it. They, do, they will not talk that they have prostate because of, I guess it's a macho thing. They don't want to talk about ED, you know, all the incontinence and everything else that goes along with it. But for me, I have uh, 18 grandkids, and I want to see most of them play sports. I got uh, two out in Arizona. I got one in Tampa that's playing the University of Tampa. I got, uh, then I had the younger one. So this is important to me to stay around to see them grow up. All right, tell us about the event on Saturday. Well, the event on Saturday is actually, it's uh, Zero, it's sponsored by Zero, and it's a run-walk thing where, you know, donations are, I guess if, if, if you um, walk so many miles or run the 10K, there's uh, fundraisers that they have and everything of that nature, but it, it's a fun time. We go down there, I'll sit there probably, sign some autographs, take pictures, you know, uh, start be at the starting line and all that, and, and just enjoy the day. So we're there for about three or four hours at the most, and uh, it's just a fun time for us. But it's, it's a very important uh, race and or very important event because it raises money for prostate cancer. Can you name all 18 of your grandkids if I put you on the spot right now? Uh, no. <laughs> we, the older ones I can get, but the younger ones, that we, got, we just had a new one. <laughs> I love the honesty. That's fantastic. The event, by the way, is at the uh, Urology, Gr Urology Group's Norwood campus, which is really easy to get to. This Saturday starts at 9 a.m. It's, uh, it's an important event. And it should be a fun event, and we have information on, on it on my blog at ESPN1530.com, search word Mo. Um, you know, obviously a lot of us this summer watched you watch your son go into the National Baseball Hall of Fame. When you go through something like what you went through about a decade ago, 
look, what you did this summer, that's special. How much more special does it become when you have survived something like prostate cancer? Well, that's what makes it so important, uh, being diagnosed and getting early and being able to be around for that event with him going into the Hall of Fame was probably one of the highlights of, of my career in terms of just watching. He did an excellent job with his speech. Uh, I just had fun, you know, and you know, it, it's just – an amazing thing to sit there and knowing that your son is going to the Hall of Fame with the best of the best is in, in there. So I, it, it, to me, like I said, after being diagnosed 10 years, 11 years ago with prostate cancer, which it could have been the other way or I wouldn't have even been around. But, you know, the PSA helped, and I'm, I'm a survivor, and I got a chance to see my son going to the to, uh, Baseball Hall of Fame. What was the coolest part of that weekend? Uh, just listening to the speech. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Just listening to his speech. He did an outstanding job with his speech. Right, Ken Griffey Sr. is with us. Uh, how how closely are you paying attention to the Reds? Uh, not very much. I, I usually just listen to, you know, I, I, I kind of keep tabs on Billy Hamilton because I know Billy can play a lot better than what's going on right now. And I know for a fact that he can hit a lot better than that, too, you know. Because I had him when he was younger, and I seen what he can do. And, you know, I threw a lot of batting practice to the kids. And I know what type of player he is. You know, he kind of reminds me of me as a young kid, you know, can run. And he, he got a little more power than I do because he's a little taller. But, you know, he can spray the ball all over the place. But it's just, you know, trying to get his head on straight. That's the biggest thing. Did you say Billy Hamilton has more power than you did? Uh, yeah, Billy got more power than anybody thinks now. Yeah, but you, had, you had, like, double-digit home run seasons, uh, though. Yeah, but still, Billy has a lot more power than people think. He just, right now, his swing is so long. And, you know, he had a nice, short, quick swing when I had him. And I, you know, and I, I threw batting practice to him all the time. You know, extra batting practice, whatever it was. But I, I, I did the same thing I did when I had Junior, when Junior was that age. I would throw batting practice, but I wouldn't tell him when I was throwing him. So you threw Billy Hamilton and Ken Griffey Jr., you threw them batting practice the exact same, because Jr. obviously had power, and I'll go ahead and say he had more than you. Billy Hamilton is, like, not a power guy at all. Do you? Yeah, like, let's not has, tell him that. He has a, a little more power than people think. Right. Billy can be a double digit, you know, and maybe to average about 10, 10, 11 home runs a year, but still, I mean, if he hits for average, the biggest thing is going to be his speed when he's going to make so, much, so many things happen because of what he can do with his speed. I mean, you're talking about what? How many bases did he steal this year? Over 50? Mm hmm You know, but you look at it. He only hit like 260, 270 or something like that. Yeah. No, I mean, he had 260, but that was like a 40-point jump from where he had been. Yeah, but I'm just saying, if he is 280 or better, what do you think his uh, um, stolen base would, would be? He'll would steal be? 80 bags. Yeah, he'll steal 80 to 100 bags. You know, I had him at 69 games, and he had 104. But he was hitting three. He was hitting 320. You know, he ended up hitting 320 that year, 323, I think, for me. But he had 104 stolen bases in, the, in like 69 or 70, 70 games. Now, when you had him, he was playing shortstop. Did you ever envision he would turn into maybe the best defensive center fielder in baseball? Uh, yeah. Really? I, I kind of figured that out when, when we were in Bakersfield. You know, a lot of people don't know, but I uh, had him out there just tracking balls for a while. Every time he, you know, had batting practice, I said, go, just go track balls in center field for a little bit. And that's what he did when he, after he took his infield play, you know, the ground balls and in infield, and he would go to the outfield and take fly balls right. off the bat. So I seen what kind of player he was. And I knew for a fact that, you know, eventually, you know, watching the Reds at that time, being I was in the organization, I knew that they would eventually need a center fielder. Yeah. You know, and he was the logical choice because of his speed. He has a great arm, you know. And, uh, you know, we had still had another shortstop in the same time. Was a year in front of Billy was uh, Didi Gregarious. Mm -hmm. And he probably has the best arm in the major leagues right now. Yeah, he's killing it in New York. Yeah, and he, he's an outstanding shortstop, but he probably has the best arm in the major leagues. That's including outfielders and all. All right, we had, you were here in Cincinnati in late June for Hall of Fame weekend. Pete Rose goes into the Reds Hall of Fame. The grade eight was there. I know Joe couldn't be there. What was the coolest part of that weekend? Oh, the coolest part of the weekend is actually just seeing Pete go into the Hall of Fame. I mean, that took that took a lot of pressure off of all of us, I guess. You know, me and that, we have the starting eight now all in the Hall of Fame, and hopefully he'll get in the big one. 
Man, that would be uh, that would be awesome. The event yeah. again is on uh, Saturday. It's very important to a uh, Ken Griffey Senior, and it's very important to a lot of men. We have information on our website at ESPN1530.com. It's at 9 a.m. this Saturday at the Urology Group's Norwood campus. And uh, again, it's for uh, people of all ages. Kids should be a good event. Should be a very important event. Uh, I appreciate this. It is awesome to get a chance to talk to you. Thank you very much. And, and I have one more thing, one more bit advice for the listeners. Uh, we have a website. It's uh, menwhospeakup.com where you can find all the information about advanced prostate cancer on the website. Menwhospeakup.com. Ken, you got it. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you very much. I've linked to that on my blog at ESPN1530.com. Search word mo 9 from 6 ESPN1530.